Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. Tonight, I really wanted to touch on Darktable again and really find out more about the masking feature. A lot of people have been asking about it. Let's do that right now. Once again, I'm Nate, this is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in. If this is your first time joining in the channel, I do a lot of work here to build a community of learning where we try to help each other and surface the art technologies, the cheap and the free, mostly open source, but we do dig into a couple commercial products just for your benefit so you can know what's out there. We touch on photo tools, we touch on video editors, photo management, screen capture tools, the whole smash. So I invite you to go back and check the other videos. There's a lot of great topics and a lot of great discussion. Don't hesitate to jump in, ask questions, relate your feedback in a family-friendly manner to what's going on, and I would love to hear from you as to the subject matter. So let's get back into Darktable. I did make videos on this previously, doing some comparisons with raw therapy and even just looking at some of the features. I wanted to touch specifically on the masking feature, which is a really cool piece of how Darktable works. Um, if you haven't seen it before, I'll just briefly summarize. It is a standalone tool uh, that loads raw images it can be very useful for other tools as well like gimp because it serves as the transposer as the raw image loader but it can also function fully by itself as a standalone product it has a lot of cool modules which are totally worth digging through a lot of tonal and color controls which give you just some amazing ability to tone an image so definitely go check it out it's free and you have nothing to lose by doing that so digging into masking this is getting into the area that uh, is a little more complicated in that you're doing actual alteration with this. It's not like enhancing colors or emboldening the uh, range of the spectrum of color. This we're actually doing edits, which is a kind of a cool uh, piece to tack onto this with masking. And it does have a few nuances, so I just wanted to walk through those carefully. Uh, the controls are under this button here, which I believe is the correction group and it's under retouch you flip it on by clicking the power button on or off and then you start off with the different types of masks that you have i'm going to start with a circle this one is a little confusing because it's not immediately clear unless you look around the screen along the top it gives you some instructions but you may not know to look there so just understanding that if you're going to make a mask you start by drawing it out and to increase the scope of what it is you have to use the uh, the roller on the mouse to make the range bigger and that's how it works and what you're doing here is you are creating at the moment you're creating almost like a clone effect which you could use to potentially erase something if you really really wanted to or to duplicate it as a situation were. It's, it's kind of an interesting tack on to what's going on. And there's varying levels of how this works, various adjustments. Um, you can cut to start to see it clone over from the, uh, the pond behind so you can get a sense of what that does. Uh, different shapes, they function a little bit differently. Where with this particular one, what we would do is we would actually use the uh, the guides to make these bigger or smaller. If we can get this to work with me here, let's hop into a different. Here we go. So for these, what we would do? Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. In order to, to edit the ones that we have out there, what you do is you unclick the mask type and then you use this uh, option on the far right and that gives you the controls to kind of go back and refine some of these. So, yeah, again, the oval, you actually have these points that you can manipulate and change. That was pretty clear. It was just the circle one where you had to use the roller to adjust it. It doesn't have those adjustment points. So just keep that in mind. Now you may have noticed me look at this down here. This is actually a really cool idea. This is a kind of pseudo grouping uh, mechanism where you can inject different masks into these different sections 
and you have the ability to merge them up and do that or you can keep them all separate so you can manipulate them more easily which is really cool and it also gives you the way to organize them so you can potentially uh, separate them or this dragging these sliders is what ultimately merges them into one compounded group um, so you can manipulate them uniformly or keep them separate and continue to manipulate them individually and you can tell the ones that have uh, masks in them by the, the green line um, I'm not sure if that comes through very well but there's a green line that indicates whether there's a mask or not in that section so very cool <laughs> and you have some control over uh, some basic alteration in the image now this is what gets really interesting is that you may say well i have a ton of stuff i want to do it's going to get very complex how far can this tool really take it well if you start to run dry of the different groupings you have here because if it's really complex there's a lot to do what you can actually do is you can create another instance now you can use the uh, roller click or there's a menu um, if you just click on this first button here that looks like almost like a copy command but it's not really that creates this next instance of retouch and lo and behold hey i got a whole new stack that i can work with and add more masks into so again you can expand that it's very easy to remove if it's not needed or if you did it by accident uh, so you can grow on that and that just becomes a really powerful feature it does have some different modes that you can work through test them out they do slightly different things. There's a lot of similarities. Um, there's a fill portion of it if you really wanted to. Blur, if you just wanted to blur something. So again, this tool is really designed for tonal and color enhancement. So this is a really interesting piece of this where you're actually doing alteration to the image in a sense. You can remove something. Uh, if there was somebody in the background you didn't want, you could potentially use this to carefully wash that out with some effort and get it done and you can get it all done in the same tool here so it's always good when you can use the same tool to get lots done right a lot of value in that so once again this is dark table i am using version 3 which is the latest one i could get for windows there might be other enhancements out there for linux i haven't checked um, but again it works in the windows layout here and i know that feature is also built into one of the versions of linux i'm not sure how far back it was natively included so i hope that was really helpful this was really amazing for me to find and i'm going to make use of this as i go through and, and do my stuff as a photographer and as a somewhat digital artist um, thank you so much for joining in once again my name is nate this is photo learningism i invite you to leave comments i also invite you to give me a thumbs up and subscribe so you can know about the other exciting videos that we're working on and don't hesitate to join the conversation it's great that we have so many who are willing to share their experience and leave comments comments ask questions because i'm happy to connect us and to try to find solutions to things i may not know the answer but i will do my best to at least connect you with the source that does that's the community of learning right thank you so much you have a great night